Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Sound and Faith Wednesday this evening. We're excited about what God is going to do for us this evening um, and throughout the rest of this week because he is good. He is worthy to be praised. So I hope you guys are rejoicing in being in the presence of God, getting to know him on a personal level, being intimate with him, not just on Sound and Faith Wednesdays, but every day. Make it time for him in your life because his plan for our life is far better than the plan that we have for ourselves. You know everything that we need. You know everything that we want. You know everything about ourselves. So it is best to just surrender all of that over to him because he is the one who is going to make it work out for our good. So um, we're going to wait a few minutes and give people time to join on and then we're going to go into prayer. Hello, Anna. How you doing? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm on this phone. Hey, Jocelyn. How are you? Oh, babe, I'm on sound and faith. <laughs> So let's see, it's 6.31. I'm gonna wait a few minutes before we jump into the word, but um, we'll jump into prayer and then go into um, the word, the word of God on this evening. Just give people a little bit more time. I'm pretty sure they're gonna come trickling in. I just don't wanna have to double back and repeat, but if I need to, I will. Can you guys see me good? Yeah, I can see you. Okay. All right. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. It's 632, and um, we don't want to spend our whole entire evening online, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And before we get started, we're going to start with prayer. So, Father God, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord God, for just making this day great for us. Thank you for already having a plan for our lives mapped out for us, Lord. Thank you that we're able to come to your throne of grace boldly to confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord God, for loving us unconditionally. Thank you for filling us with your joy, with your peace, Lord God with your unfailing love, Lord. There is none like you, Lord God. So everything about us, Lord, we surrender it over to you, Lord God, so that you can have your perfect way in us and through us, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do in us and through us, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for a fresh anointing on this evening, Lord God, a renewed mind, Lord God, and a renewed spirit in Christ Jesus. We give you all the glory, give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so we're going to jump in the word, and what we're going to be studying it on today is um, um, our purpose, our purpose here on the earth, why we were, were created. And I know a lot of times, you know, when people talk about purpose, they, they tie purpose to their job, they tie purpose to their family lineage. Um, they tie purpose to what they feel their plan is for their life, what they have mapped out. And um, that, and truly that's actually not it. Our plan, our plan and our purpose is not the same as God's plan is in his purpose. We was created in the image of God. We was created into the image of God. We was created, created into his likeness. And so everything about us it starts with God. So that's why it's important for us to have a personal relationship, being intimate, taking time, being intentional about being in the presence of God, setting time aside outside of our daily activities. Because a lot of times you'll find that, well, I, I'm 
I'm going to say for me, when I uh, start seeking God diligently with my whole heart, then that's when I begin to walk in the purpose that he created me for here on this earth. And so um, I want to say on the 25th, September 25th, that was on a Sunday, um, I went up to Atlanta, me and my husband, and we was going to see our grandson who's playing t-ball. And so um, my daughter, my bonus daughter, she asked me and she said, um, did you, this is what you plan to do? Where, did you always plan to, you know, to do this, to preach, you know, to give the word? And I'm like, oh, no. You know, I never even vision myself giving the word. Now, yes, did I always know, I did always know that something was different about me, that when I heard the word of God, when I was going to church, I actually tuned in. I mean, literally as a child, I, I wanted to know more. You know, I had visions, different visions and things that he showed me, but I never really pictured my life um, being, um, I guess, I want to say in the forefront, but I never pictured my life, you know, speaking um the word of god in front of people you know so to speak i don't want to say a preacher or anything like that i don't even want to say minister because minister we all are minister of reconciliations we all are you know ministers our ministry is used throughout our life our life supposed to be a a platform of lifting christ up in us so our life should be a, a vision or a uh, picture for other people to see the goodness of the Lord, to see his grace and his mercy, to see his unfailing love because of our relationship with him. And when I was talking about uh, other people, I'm, I'm speaking of um, people who might not have a relationship with Christ, who might not even know anything about him, or they could have came up in a different um uh, background to where you know they they you know worship other things you know what I mean so our life is ambassadors of Christ and it's just what it says we are ambassadors for Christ we are Christ ambassadors an ambassador is a representation of something or a person so we are a representation of Christ here on this earth so anytime that we come in contact with someone or um, in the things that we do, even working on our job, it is the representation of who we are in Christ. And so when we talk about purpose, we're talking about being fulfilled. You know, you, you, you go through life and you do this and you do that, but it's really not any fulfillment in it because it was something that you just was doing because you wanted to do it or because you felt like it would have brain more money to you, but how many of us actually really seek God for his plan for our lives? And to be honest with you, really, the roadmap of our entire life is in the Bible. Everything that we need to know, uh, how we should be uh, responding, how we should be loving people, uh, our uh, Everything about ourselves is in this Bible because we are created in his image, in, in his likeness. So if you go to um, Genesis, Okay, so if you go to Genesis chapter one and you uh, look at verse 26, after God got finished creating everything that he wanted to be created in the earth, these are the things that he said. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
So right there in that very passage, it is telling you that God said, let us. So let me let you know that it was not just God. It was also Jesus in, in the works as well. Because it says, let us. Let us make man in our image. Well, how do we uphold the image of God? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding and everything that God had created us to, created us to be. It is revealed through the Holy Spirit. So when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, not only did you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you also receive the Holy Spirit as well, which is the comforter that he promised to send to us. So the Holy Spirit does not leave us blindfolded. It's, it, it, the Holy Spirit is like what we would call a North Star. You know, you, you, you know, during Christmas time, people talk about the North Star and the manger, mangers and all those different things. But think about the Holy Spirit being a North Star. You look up and you and it guides you on which direction you need to go in. Well, the Holy Spirit does that. But a lot of times it's because we are so full of ourselves and so full of what we want and what we think that we should have then we walk in outside of the purpose that God created us for. We walk outside the purpose that God created us for. So, and so in 26, it says, then God said, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Then he says, let them have dominion. He, get, he given us dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creeps on the earth. Well, how do I have access to all these things that God has given me dominion on? Through Christ. Christ gave us the keys to everything that God had created us for. So if you go back into your word and you read from the beginning, you know there was Adam and there was Eve. And you know that they uh, Eve ate the fruit and she gave some to Adam. Okay, the enemy trick Eve to make her think that God was hiding something from her, that it was more to what God told her. So she ate the fruit. But what she didn't realize is she was already like God. Her and, animal, her and Adam was already like God. So it wasn't nothing God was doing, uh, was keeping from them at all. Because they was just like him already in the earth. So when they ate that fruit, the forbidden fruit of the tree of good and evil, that put an empathy between us and God. So God had to turn around and say, okay, since you did this, this is what I'm going to have to do. So Jesus came to fulfill everything that we could not fulfill because now our eyes are open to good and evil, the thing that God did not intend for us to have access to in the first place. So Jesus had to come and get us back in right standing with God. So that empathy that was between us and God, Jesus fulfilled it. So now we're back in right standing with God. The eyes of our understanding is being in light. And so not only are we back in right standing with God, we have a mediator, which is Christ, who sits on the right hand of God for us. And so when God looks at us, he, he looking at us through Jesus and what he has already done. He's not looking for us to do anything. He's looking for, he's looking at what Jesus already done. And so let me make my, let me make it clear when I say he's not looking for us to do anything. He's not looking for us to try to please him. Jesus has already pleased him. He's looking for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And when we talk about worship, we're not just talking about old singing praise songs or anything like that. Who we are in our personal relationship in Christ is a form of worship. 
So when we want to know what our purpose is, if you really want to know what your purpose is in life and what you're here to do, it's not going to be in your family lineage. It's not going to be tied to um, a, a specific job or anything like that. Yes, we do have jobs. And yes, we are led to certain jobs that we have. But sometimes, and I'll use myself, I was looking for, I was work several different places because I was trying to fulfill something on the inside of me that though I was trying to get those jobs and me making more money to fulfill something that was on the inside of me that could only be fulfilled by God. So my sense of being and my sense of fulfillment and the peace that I have now and the joy that I have now is not in all these things that I have collected along the way or not in how much money I make or not even in my marriage or in my children or in, um, in our business. It is in Christ. It's in Christ. And then verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created me. The enemy is having a field day with our young people. And not just our young people, but people all over this world. Because they don't know their purpose. They don't even know who they are. Because they don't know who, they, who God is. So it's important for us to know who God is and know what he has done for us through Christ Jesus so he can show us who we are in him. And he's not just going to show us who we are in him. He's going to show us some things about ourselves. But he's going to do it out of love for us. And then he's going to continue to form and shape us um, into who he originally created us to be. So you don't just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You get a new life. You get a new identity. He's not looking at past. He ain't even looking at your future right now. He's looking at who you, who he created you to be from the beginning of time. From the time that you was in your mother's womb. From the time that I was in my mother's womb. He already knew. He already knew the mistakes that I was going to make. He already knew um, the heartbreaks that was going to happen because the, the choices that I made. And he's, and he's not keeping anything from us. We just become so crowded in our mind and in our heart with fulfilling the things that we think need to be fulfilled. We get so overwhelmed with the things that the world said that we needed to accomplish. I got two degrees and them degrees do not define me. We are tying our identities to things that does not identify who we are. So we have to let go of this illusion of who the world think we are and walk into the image of who we was created to be. But the only way that we can walk in the image of who we was created to be is starting with a up close personal relationship with our Lord and Savior. On last week was part two of surrender. The week before that, it was part one of surrender. And so I was intentional about surrendering everything about myself over to Christ, over to the Lord. And there was a lot of things that came up that I had buried that I didn't even know that it was still an issue because it was buried so deep. And so God had to bring those things to the surface. This is why he spoke to me through via the Holy Spirit, surrender. And so I was intentional about surrendering 
over to him those things, the overthinking, the enemy trying to make me believe something that has not even transpired. I had to surrender those things. I had to surrender bad choices I made as a young mother. Um, I had to surrender um, broken promises. I had to surrender rejection and abandonment. I had to surrender um, hurtful relationships. I had to surrender things that um, anything that left a space in my heart. I surrendered and I surrendered everything. I had to surrender uh, my uh, baby boy over to the Lord. I had to surrender my finances over to the Lord. I had to surrender my anointing over to the Lord because he created me. He know everything that I need. He know what needs to be put out into this earth. I don't get on here and say, this is, oh, this is what I want to talk about today. No, I said, Lord, what is it that we need to hear on today? We, your people want to hear from you. I'm just an instrument that he used. And so when I surrender, I'm talking about surrender at all. We're holding nothing, leaving nothing on the table. And intentionally, when something tried to rise up to me, rise up in me that was separate from what God had already showed me or told me, I surrendered that over. And even now, I still surrender. Lord, I surrender. I surrender sound of faith to you. I surrender everything about myself over to you. And then on Sunday, on my way to church, and being obedient to surrendering over to the Lord, I heard God speaking to me, and he said, release. He kept telling me, release. You are released. He told, he showed me that I was walking into a spiritual promotion. And we have talked about that on Sound of Faith. Everything that we need Everything that we need is on the inside of us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So everything about us is going to start on the inside. Everything God is going to do is going to start on the inside of us. He cannot put new wine in old wine skin because the old wine is going to contaminate the things that he want to do new. And it's just going to be like a virus and it's going to spray. So he got to cut off that old thing. And so when I went into Sunday service, it was something different about my worship because I was able to release all of that stuff that has been lingering on. You know how like you have, um, I use uh, chicken for an example. You know how when you, 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 you get your chicken and you clean it, especially thighs. Thighs have all this extra fat on it. And I don't know about you, but I know I don't like it that. So it takes me probably about an hour, maybe almost two hours to go through each piece of chicken and get all that fat off of it. It takes a minute for me to get all that fat off of it because I don't want the fat lingering. So when I get ready to cook my chicken, I don't want to be frying fat along with it because I love my chicken crispy and I like to eat the skin and I don't want fat up under the skin. Okay, so that's how it is with us. A lot of us are carrying around a, le- a lot of extra meat fat that we don't need. That was that it wasn't even meant for us to even have. So Jesus says in his word that God is the husband then, and he is the true vine and we are the branches. And everything that is good, he keeps. And everything, every good fruit is keep, he keeps and it's multiplied and all the bad fruit is cut off. Well, that's what the extra, when I wasn't in the place of surrendering everything over to him, all of that weight of that extra, that baggage, stuff that lingered on, that is when it, when the enemy reminds me of it, it brings a hurt feeling. Or when you find yourself in a uh, position, um, when you find yourself in a position uh, that reminds you of that place that you used to be in. So when you don't, when you're hanging on to it and God wants to enlarge our territory, when he wants to uh, move us 
into a different place. We can't take that with us. And so because out of obedience, I'm able to receive all the things that God want to do in me right now. Because I let go of all those things that was holding me back. And a lot of it was self. See, we want to continue to be in control. When God had all really, really gave us control, he gave us the me. But it's supposed to be in a it's supposed to be in a place of obedience to who we are in Him. Everything that God doing in us is is um everything God is doing in us it is meant for us to give Him glory, not glory for ourselves. So being created in his image, knowing who you are in Christ, you want to know what your purpose is. You're going to find that in God. You're going to find everything that you need to know about your life, about all the things that he wants you to do, all the things that he has for you is in the word of God. And as a matter of fact, the word of God says, no man should eat off of bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We should, we should be full off of being in the presence of God, reading his word. So the Bible is a wealth of knowledge for our life. And as we get in personal relationship with him, he begins to reveal to, to us who we are, how we should operate, what we should be doing, how we show up on our jobs, how we show up as a wife or as a husband, how we show up as a parent, as a friend, as a sister, as a auntie, everything. So I'm intentionally living my life in such a way that I'm seeking God in every decision that I make. I'm seeking God in every move that I want to make. I'm seeking God for what's next on my job. I'm seeking God for what next for our marriage, for our children, for our grandchildren, for our business. I'm seeking God in every area of my life diligent. I'm not only seeking him, but I'm surrendering to him those things. Because I know in him, he's going to give me a perfect plan on how I need to strategize, on how I need to move forward, on what I need to do next, on the right people uh, for my life, for that's going to bring food. Because see, here's the thing. When you're walking in your purpose, there's a fulfillment on the inside of you that I can't even explain. It's so peaceful. When you're walking in purpose, you're going to have fruit, everlasting fruit. And fruit doesn't consist of material things. You're going to see the work of the Lord, not just in your life, but also in the lives of the people that you are connected to. I want to be such a uh, so fruitful in such a way that people can only say that it can be nobody but God. And you know, you know when you're uh, when God gives you something to do, he when he gives you a vision on what to do, he gives you the, the plan, he shows you how to strategize, he shows you how to move, he provides the resources, he provides everything. But you can't have provision without a vision. It first starts with vision. And that vision is from God. It can be a million people doing the same thing that you're doing, but because God has placed that vision on you and he showed you how to strategize and he showed you who to network with and he gave you the resources that you need, 
you are experiencing an abundance of overflow in your life. So not just in your life, but in the people who are connected to you where you're able to provide jobs, you're able to feed the homeless, you're able to speak to um, youth in this area over here. So you're being fruitful and multiplying, spreading the gospel, spreading the good news about who Christ is in your life. So you can you have the availability to introduce other people to Christ. It's us that takes up a lot of space. We get so consumed and so busy with all the things that we want to do. And then we go out and do all these things we want to do. We go out and get this job that we want because it makes this certain amount of money. You know, we go and date this person because of their outer appearance. We go and do all these things that our, that we desire and did not seek God. And then we wonder why the, these things does not last. Oh, but God is so good. He is so merciful. He's so kind. He is so compassionate. And he, his love is so unfailing for us. He give us a way of escape. He give us a way of escape. And we can still fulfill the purpose that in the plan that he has for our life because Jeremiah 29 11 God says I know the plans that I have towards you says the Lord not to harm us but to give us a hope and a future to prosper us to give us an expected end so I'm going to the first thing is, if you want to know your purpose, you got to get into the word of God. You got to get into the word of God. Read the word of God for yourself. Get a personal relationship for him. And as you get ready to read the word, I remember when I um, start getting up close and personal, meaning outside of the church, me taking time aside from the Lord. So when I start to read the word and the Holy Spirit is moving through me, and giving me different um, chapters to go to in the Bible, or well, different um, Bible verses and chapters to go to in the Bible, I will start off, number one, praying and asking God to give me revelation knowledge on what the word, his word is saying to me and what it means for me in my life and in, this, in that moment. And, and then I'll get into the word and I'll read. And after I got finished reading the word, the word of God, then I'll pray and I'll thank God for um, revelation knowledge, for flowing freely through me. And then the more I did that, the more I, I was in relationship with him, the more the things, my life started lining up with the word of God. So I just didn't get here by chance of accident. God already had this plan, but he was waiting on me because he's a gentleman. He's not going to force anything on us. He was waiting on me to open up the door to receive it so that I can receive him just for myself. Not me going to a church building, but me having a personal relationship with him. Me spending time with him outside of the church, outside of somebody watching getting in my secret place and spend the time with you. The second thing, if you want to know your purpose and what God created you to do and all that he has planned for you, pray for direction. Pray for the will of God, for your life to be aligned with the will of God. And that could be um, starting with scripture first. Um, maybe you have an app, um, the Bible app on your phone, or maybe you have a, um, some type of Christian app that, you know, speaks the word of God in your life. Um, or your daily devotional. I, I know I like to, I like um, Stormy O'Martin, I think her name is. She has different um, prayer devotionals. Um, I love Joyce Myers. Joyce Myers uh, is really good. The Battle of the Mind, uh, different 
you know, things. It's so many different prayer journals that can start you off with that close up and personal relationship with Christ. And even, and I would say this, spend about five or 10, start off with maybe 10, I would say 15 minutes at the most. And then as you start, those 15 minutes are gonna start turning into 30 minutes. That 30 minutes is gonna start to turn into an hour. Sometimes that hour might turn into two hours because now you have a relationship with him. He's showing you who he is. You, he's showing you who you are in him. He's, he's revealing things to you and you love being in, your, in his presence. It's an, an intentional. It's nothing that um, you forcefully doing or nobody is making, you want to spend time with him. So pray for direction. Um, the third thing is follow the will of God. So in order for us to follow the will of God for our lives, we have to put down this life that we think we have for the life that God intended for us to have and live. He said, Jesus said that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. If you want to live life to the full and the overflow, it's in Christ Jesus. It's in Christ. And in Matthew 6, 33, it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So when we see God first and his righteousness, everything that we need is added unto us. I always like to um, talk about David's son, Solomon. Solomon. When David passed away, he left everything to him. So Solomon had a dream, or Simon, I'm sorry, it might be Simon, I might be saying his name wrong, but he had a dream. And in that dream, he was having a conversation, a dialogue with the Lord. And he was telling the Lord, I thank you for what you have done for my father and how faithful that you have been to me. He said, but can you show me, I'm just putting it in layman terms, Show me how to be good steward over all that you have blessed me with. Give me wisdom on how to handle everything that has been bestowed on me that's been passed down from my father that you have blessed my father. And so Jesus didn't ask him, he didn't ask him for um, more. He asked him on how to handle what he had. But in the beginning, he talked about, I thank you for how you blessed my father and, and all that you have blessed my father with, and now it's bestowed on me. So basically, that was he was in a place of surrender. All that has been bestowed on him from his father, he was surrendering back to him because he's telling the Lord, how do I handle this? Give me the wisdom on how to manage everything that you have given me through my father. So Jesus, uh, so the Lord spoke back to him and said, because you did not ask me for riches, silver and gold, or you did not ask me for long life, I'm going to give you wisdom that no one else ever had before. And not only am I going to give you wisdom, I'm going to give you riches. And I'm going to give you long life. Because he didn't ask for. He just wanted the wisdom on how to manage what God has already blessed him with through his father day. That's what surrender does for us. That's what knowing where our purpose resides. He didn't ask our relative. He didn't ask none of the servants or the people who came up with his father, he went to the Lord in prayer. In a dream, had a dialogue. With him. And then in the God's word, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and my righteousness. 
And God is wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So that's what Solomon did. He sought God, righteousness. He sought the kingdom of God first for the answers on how to move forward with everything that had been, he'd been bestowed upon him. And then your purpose, the promises of God. God made many promises in the Bible for us and they will, and it is gonna come to pass. He made many promises for us in the Bible. So we have to understand that the will of God for our life, we can look at the many promises God had already made in this world. When we seek the kingdom of God first, then we know we can, we'll see. He'll show us, he'll reveal to us the promises that he has made. And God is not a man that he shall lie. If he said it, then that settles it. And I talked about this earlier, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, disaster, to give you a future and a hope. That's a promise. Romans 8, 28 through 29, in all things, God works for our good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, which is to be conformed to the likeness of his son. That's a promise. James 1, 17, every good gift and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of heavenly light, who does not change like the shifting shadows. That's another promise. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. And he is not going to change. What he said is not going to change. These are promises. He has to keep his word. And we can bet on that. And so number four was promises of God. Look at the promises of God. Get into the word of God and, and look at all the promises that he made. It's all, he, he made them and, and they're going to come full circle in our life. Number five, living a purpose-driven life. Our life should be Christ-centered. That means that Christ should be the head of our life. And we should be glorifying God in all things. In all things. So it starts with having that um, a personal relationship with him getting in the word of God, seeing all the things that God has already done for us, then that, then you gonna, he's gonna start revealing to you his plan. He's gonna start showing you things that he wants you to do to live a Christ-centered life. He's gonna be a character in you. He's gonna be a preservation in you. He's gonna be a patient in you. He's going to um, build um, meekness and hum humble, humility and humbleness. In you. You're going to want to be obedient to, the, to what God is saying, you, saying to you and telling you to do. And really, to be honest with you, when you start walking in your purpose, people who you thought was going to be there for you are uh, on that journey. Some of those people are going to fall off. So this is why we have to, uh, we should be in close relationship because he's not going to make you. You want to be in relationship with him because then you're going to not lean on your understanding, but you're going to lean on his understanding because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So, because, so the more you become Christ-like, the more it's going to be some things about yourself that gonna have to be removed from you because God didn't design you to be that way.
it's going to be some people and some places that you're going to no longer desire to be around. And it's not that they are bad. They're just not part of the plan that God has for your life. And in that very moment, it's some things that he want to do in you. When you get in relationship with him, the closer you get to him, the closer your relationship will come to him, the more time you spend with him, you're going to find yourself feeling like you're being separated from the things that you just thought you loved and the people that you just thought you loved. But separation is elevation. And again, it doesn't mean that these people are bad, that they did something wrong or anything like that. It's just that God wants you to spend time with him by himself so he can shape, continue to shape you and renew you and strengthen you and, and, and remove that doubt from you and remove that fear from you and remove that anger from you and remove that disappointment from you and remove those lustful desires that keep pulling the wrong things to you and remove those things that you thought that you need that you didn't need in the first place. Those are the things that God want to do. That's what relationship is with Christ. So when somebody try to remind you of who you used to be or what you used to do, you won't even give it thought. You won't even answer to that because that's not who you are. I don't know that person. Like Paul was. When somebody tried to remind Paul when he was Saul, he quickly denounced it and he boldly confessed who he was in Christ. But before Paul can do that, Paul was in a place, went into a place of surrender. Jesus told Peter that he was going to be the rock that he built his church on. But he also told Peter that he was going to deny him three times. So when Peter did exactly what God said that he would do, what Jesus said that he was do, he, he, he kind of stepped away. He kind of, he stepped away for a minute before he got back on the scene. Peter had to get into a place of surrender. And when he surrendered, and he got in close proximity with the relationship and the version of who God said he was going to build his church on, and then he received the Holy Spirit, then when Peter came back on the scene, Even greater works were being done through him. Peter was healing the sick. He was casting out demons. He was doing all those things that Jesus was done when they was walking with Jesus. So Jesus, that's why Jesus told them, it is to my advantage that I go away. Because if I don't go away, then I can't send the helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the advocate. The Holy Spirit is to our advantage. So, um, and so we would admit, we, we really was created to become like Christ. By faith, by faith, When we read the word of God, we got to believe it. We got to believe the word of God by faith. Because it's impossible to please God without faith. The word of God said he's dealt each and every last one of us a measure of faith. Well, how do I build that faith up? By hearing the word of God. By hearing the word of God. And it's, that's in Hebrews um, chapter 11. Let me get to it. Faith is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. So we faith moves God. Faith moves God. And there's one more scripture before we close out I want to give to you about faith. It's in Romans um, chapter 10, verse 17. And I want to go there. Faith, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if God dealt to each and every last one of us a measure of faith, then how we continue to stand in faith Faith, how we continue to be steadfast, unshakable, unremovable. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, not the word of somebody else, not the word of um, your mother, your father. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So, yes, your parents are somebody that you know might have led you to Christ. But in order for your faith muscle to to get built up is going to start with hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is about, remember, the purpose for our life. If we want to know the purpose for our life, it begins with the word of God. But also, we have to believe the word of God. Faith, faith, faith. Um, that is it for this evening. I hope you guys was blessed by the word of God. I hope that you take time out and have that personal relationship with God outside of sound of faith, outside of you going to church on Sunday. Um, have that. But also I will say it is important for us to have um, faith-filled friends in our lives that can hold us accountable with love, that can pray for us when we need praying, that, that will speak the word of God over um, our lives. We need those people. We need them. You, you, I'll, I don't want to, if I'm on this faith wall, but I'm still in a relationship. And the relationship ain't kind of good. And it's easy to say, oh, you just need to leave that person. No, you're going to fake this thing all the way through. And then God will release you from it. But he going to do it in due time. Everything that God want to do is in us is a process. It's not going to happen overnight. He's going to bring restoration back to us. And sometimes he has to strengthen us before he moves us so that when he moves us, we won't go back to it. But I don't want to be in that place. And then I call one of my friends and she's hyping me up to go bust a window or go show up um, on his job. Something that's not going to bring God glory. No, you don't need that. You need people who are going to say, no, no, sis, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray about this thing. We're going to ask God to give us strength um, to continue to move forward. We're going to ask God to um, strengthen the areas in our lives that need to be strengthened. Uh, we're going to ask God for total dependence on him and, and not this man or not this job or whatever the case may be. You, you want somebody who's going to pray for you right then and there on the scene. Dang, you and Amy got to tell them what's going on. They just going to pray for you. Because see, the Holy Spirit is going to give us what we need to pray for anyway.
and that's another thing about living in um, a Christ-centered life. We learn to be patient with other people. We learn to love people uh, for who they are. We learn to extend grace to other people because that same grace God given us, he given it to everybody else because God said, when sin abide, his grace much more abide. Because at some point in our life, we were out there ratcheting out our mind, crazy, doing all kinds of stuff, kicking out one of those uh, uh, nut if you buck type, you know, I know I used to, <laughs> you know, at one point in our life. But now I'm looking and bucking in the spirit. Because it ain't my battle to fight. And I ain't looking and bucking for the Lord to do something to somebody. I'm looking and bucking that they give their life over to Christ. So they can experience this type of love that I'm experiencing. So they can walk in fulfillment and wholeness and, and peace and patience and lose the anger. Walk in humility and humbleness. God is good. God is good. You guys can take your phone off of mute. Um, we have about four minutes left. So I'm going to open up the floor. If you guys got any prayer requests or anything like that, um, you can either... I'll put it in the chat, and if it's something that you don't want anyone to see, you can just directly to me, send us in the chat. If you know my cell phone number, you can just text to me, and I'll pray for you um, and all of that. So if you have a prayer request, if you know anybody that needs uh, prayer, uh, if you want to put somebody on the prayer list or anything like that, you can send that, you can text that to me as well. Um, and um, that's pretty much it. And share... Um, I would love for you guys to share Sound and Faith with people that you might know need it. You can actually send them the link and they can join on as well. Um, or you can direct them to Sound and Faith YouTube page. And also I'm on Facebook, um, Sound and Faith, where I do daily devotionals now um, that I send out every morning. Well, what the Lord allows me to send out every morning, I send those daily, daily devotionals there with um a little passage then there's a prayer and then there's a scripture so um if you don't have a daily devotional that you use you can um jump on to facebook um instagram i'm on instagram and i'm on um tiktok so um and i and they those sound of faith messages go on there to everyone so even if you're not my friend, um, even if you're not my friend, let's see, hold on, I don't know what I'm doing here. Can y'all, okay, there we go. Even if you're not my friend, you can still see the messages. But I would love for you guys to follow Sound of Faith page um, on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Like them and share them if you would love to. Okay. Um, is there anything anyone would like to say? I love the sermon today. This is nice. Well, praise God. And yes, definitely. I, I know I missed the past couple of weeks because of practice and stuff like that. So it's just nice to hear the good word. Well, praise God for that. Praise God. Um, I'm just grateful for, you know, me just really being intentional about what God wants me to do and not shrinking back um, and just allow him to lead the way to uh, show me the uh, path going down this road that he got me on and just being my true authentic self and trusting him in the process of everything that he wants to do with me and in all the lives of the people that he wants to connect because it's, it's not about me. It's really about him and what he wants to do in you guys. And he gets the glory, not me, not you, not nobody else. God gets all the glory for what he is doing. So uh, we're going to go ahead and um, close out with prayer. Um, I do have one prayer request. Is there anybody else before I begin? 
Okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that your word has gone forth. And we thank you, Lord God, that your word has fell on good ground. We know that your word would not return unto us void, but it'll accomplish what you have set it out to do, Lord God. I ask you, Lord God, on this evening, Lord God, to strengthen each and every last one of us, Lord God. Strengthen us in all the areas that you know that we need to be strengthened in, Lord God. Prepare us in the areas that we need to be prepared in, Lord God. Show us grace, Lord God. Thank you for showing us grace in the areas that grace needs to be shown, Lord God. Thank you for being merciful to us, Lord God, even when we was doing our own thing, Lord God. We trust you. We trust your plan. We thank you for what you have done through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord God, for all the things that you're going to work out for our good because we love you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for... Um, relationships, Lord God, center, Christ-centered relationships, Lord God, that'll bring life to us, Lord God, that'll be a part of the plan that you have designed for us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for mending broken families right now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for restoring lost souls in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, we pray right now for a uh, 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 torn of your restoration, Lord God, on wounds that needs to be healed, Lord God, on relationships that was lost, Lord God. We ask for a restoration of your peace upon us, Lord God, a restoration of your joy upon us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you're going to do, Lord God, in every area of our life, Lord God. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we give you the honor, Lord God. This is the day that you have made, Lord God. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. Allow us to be joyful, Lord God. Allow your word to flow through us like a river of living water, Lord God. Allow us not to strength back to that old version of who you did not call us to be, Lord God. Allow us to walk in the spiritual authority that Christ, that you have given us through Christ, Lord God, that those things that we speak, Lord God, it is your word and not our word, Lord God, that we can call those things not as though they were, Lord God. We come against every demonic spirit, Lord God, every retaliated demon, Lord God, anything that does not operate in the way that you said needs to operate, Lord God. We cast it down right now, Lord God. Lord God, we come before your throne, Lord God, casting down every vain imagination, every high place, Lord God, that's trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, and we bring it to captivity to the obedience of Christ right now, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, that we think on those things that are true, that are noble, that are pure, that are on love, Lord God. We set our minds on things above and not on things on this earth, Lord God. We seek your face, Lord God. We seek your righteousness, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're going to add all things unto us, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that the eyes of our understanding is being enlightened. We thank you, Father God, that as we get ready to go, Lord God, that we meditate on your word day and night, Lord God, that we seek your face, Lord God, that we have a personal encounter with you, Lord God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, you guys amen. have a great um, evening, and I will see you guys on next week. Yes, ma'am. All right, you have a good one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.